Comrade Wood, seven to four. Trojan Fenn, nine to four. Wassell is still three to one. Montekin, twelve to one. Larianoff stays on twenty-two to one, and Welsh Heidel, thirty-three to one. There is the only filly in the race, Cormorant Wood. She's by home guard out of Quarry Wood, who's by Super Sam. And just how that uh, home guard used to stamp his stock. And they're getting a little bit warm, but I thought this filly in the paddock, when John was having a look at her, looked fitter than she did at Newbury. She's got a little more, more of an edge on her. A really super mare that uh, won the champion stakes last year in that uh, terrific style, bursting through in the last 100 yards to snatch the spoils by a head. She travelled after that race to America to run in the uh, Laurel Invitation at Maryland, but found the mile and a half too far for her on that occasion. Nevertheless, ran a super race. Wasn't too far behind the placed horses, but to just got a little tired where it mattered. She's going into stall seven, stall four, with Steve Cawthon now nearly all in. Let's join Peter. Yes, that's it. Under starter's orders, and they're away. And Welsh Idol in the early stages. Coming over to the stand side, Wassel upsides sides him. Montagin is tracking Welsh Idol. Then comes Cormorant Wood and Larianoff and Trojan Fenn. Welsh Idol and Cash Asmussen from uh, Willie Carson on Wassel. Then Cormorant Wood tucked in behind him with Montagin upsides. Then Larianoff and Lester, the back marker of the six at the moment on Trojan Fenn as they pass the five furlong pole. Welsh Idol on the inside of Wassel. Cormorant Wood and Montekin. Larianoff and then Trojan Fenn racing down towards the half mile pole. And still Welsh Idol in command from Wassel. Larianoff towards the outside. Montekin tucked in on the rail. Making progress is Cormorant Wood. The back marker still is Trojan Fenn. That past the three furlong pole now. Wassel challenging Welsh Idol. Cormorant Wood coming there to get on terms with them. Larianoff under pressure. Leicester unleashing uh, Trojan Fenn towards the outside. Welsh Idol, though, still with the advantage from Trojan Fenn on the outside. Cormorant Wood between horses. Racing down towards the furlong pole. Welsh Idol in command from over on the far side. Trojan Fenn and Leicester Piggott between horses. Cormorant Wood racing into the closing stages. Welsh Idol on the near side. Trojan Fenn on the far side. It's Trojan Fenn and Welsh Idol as they race up towards the line. Trojan Fenn, Welsh Idol, and at the line. It's a photo finish. Trojan Fenn has just won it from Welsh Idol and Cormorant Wood and then came Wassel and Larianoff and finally Montekin the judge may call on a photo but I think there's no doubt that Lester Piggott has scored in round one yes he's called the numbers Trojan Fenn is the winner Welsh Idol is second and so the result of the Queen Anne stakes first number seven Trojan Fenn owned by Mr Stavros Niarchus trained by Henry Cecil and written by Lester Piggott second was number six Welsh Idol owned by Mr Paul Kellaway trained by him and written by Cash Asmussen third was number two Cormac and Wood, owned by Mr. Bobby McAlpine, trained by Barry Hills, written by Steve Cawthon, and fourth was number one, Wassels. So, Henry Cecil wins the Queen Anne Stakes for the fourth year in succession. And Lester Piggott wins it for the fifth time. Here's how he did it, reviewed by Julian Wilson. Well, a great start to the Royal Meeting, and predictably the maestro getting off uh, on the right foot. Welsh Idol, the horse on the rails, uh, made a brilliant effort to make just about every yard of the running. Pressed here by Wassel, one off the rails, and here Leicester looming up on the outside to make his run on Trojan Fan. Cormorant Wood, uh, three from the left. Montagin is one of the first beaten, and Cormorant Wood f finds disappointing a little when Steve Cawthon lets her down. But coming to the two now, Lester's gone for his whip, and for a moment, it looks as if Cash Asmussen, with the rails to help him, is going to pull off a major shock on Welsh Idol, because at this point, Welsh Idol was still in front and still going strong. Cormorant Wood back in third, finding nothing. But Lester, who knows every blade of grass here, has knuckled down, asked for maximum effort from the three-year-old, and despite the three pounds overweight, oh, well, uh, the terms of the race still, in fact, in favour of the three-year-old, wears down Welsh Idol in just the last uh, few strides of the race uh, to gain Leicester's first of the week. It certainly won't be the last. Welsh Idol didn't quite get home, but this is Trojan Fenn back to his best distance and back to his best form. So already the maestro on his way to winning his 11th Ritz Club charity trophy.
He won this Queen Anne Stakes, the traditional opener to Royal Ascot, for the first time in 1972. He left it a long while for him before he won his first. Then he won it in 79, 81, 82. And now, proving as one would expect, a great value for his three pound overweight. Henry Cecil just moving into the winner's circle to greet this 115,000 guinea son of Troy, having won in 1981 with Belmont Bay, Trojan fan, the 9 to 4 second favourite, 82 with Mr. Flora Carbon, and 83 with Valia. Henry there to the left in the dark topper, Philip Payne Galway. Stavros Niarchus is manager in a dark topper to the right there. A pat from Leicester for Trojan Fenn. And so handsome consolation to his connections for that misfortune at Newbury where he stumbled on leaving the stalls and unshipped the Paul Eddery who had no chance of staying with him in the lock-in to the race, of course, that uh, Cormorant Wood and Wassell finally did he. <laughs> Cracking good run by Welsh Idol, Paul Callaway, pattern race Paul, as he's uh, known, invariably uh, produces the ace in the pack, and he certainly shocked the backers of the front ones, the well-backed uh, candidates here beaten only half a length incidentally with two lengths separating second and third and the full starting price is as follows first number seven Trojan Fen nine to four second number six Welsh Idol 40 to one and third number two Cormorant Wood seven Walken is firm favorite now 11 to eight Legend of France two to one Ptolemyo six to one Hot Touch eight to one and Muscatite 14 to one Ptolemyo had the blindfold on there. It looks as if he's going to be the first into the stalls, but here's the favourite, Morcon. Now, Legend of France. Legend of France will be the third of the five runners to go in. Hot Touch is the next, just one to go, which is Muscatite, and here's Peter O'Sullivan. Yes, thank you, John, that's it. They're all installed for the Prince of Wales. The white flag poised under orders. And they're away. And Morkan goes on. Nobody very anxious to make it. A very steady pace. Morkan from Legend of France on the inside. Hot Touch and Ptolemyo and Muscatite, the back marker of the quintet. As Morkan and Willie Carson make it a very sedate pace indeed. Legend of France on the inside of Hot Touch and then on the outside of Hot Touch is Ptolemyo and the back marker is Muscatite. And still they haven't quickened. Willie is sitting there, sitting against uh, Morgan. Ptolemyo, the Budweiser million winner. On the outside, in second now, just ahead of Hot Touch and Legend of France and Muscatite, closely grouped. So they run now towards the six furlong pole and past it and Ptolemyo goes on marginally on the outside of Morgan, a little between them, then Hot Touch, Legend of France and Muscatite racing past the five pole, Morgan on the inside of Ptolemyo, Hot Touch very close, Legend of France, Muscatite making ground towards the outside Half a mile to run now in the Prince of Wales and still a wide open race. Morgan from on the outside. Ptolemyo, hot touch, very close. Legend of France next and Muscatide upsides as they swing for home now. 
and it's Morgan in the lead with Hot Touch coming there strongly towards the outside is Ptolemyo, then Legend of France being chased along by Joe Mercer and then Muscatide improving from the rear. They're coming to the two furlong pole. Morgan being pressed by Ptolemyo on the outside. Hot Touch between horses. Legend of France has really got it to do and he's not going to do it and Muscatide is coming there strongly on the stand side but it's Morgan being pressed now by Hot Touch. Morgan and Willie Carson being pressed by Lester Pickett on Hot Touch and Muscatide coming there strongly towards the stand side. It's Morgan now with the challenge of Muscatite. Morgan on the far side, Muscatite on the near side. Morgan's going to hold them all as they come to the line. Morgan is the winner. It's going to be a photo of a second with Hot Touch just second ahead of Muscatite and Ptolemyo. And Legend of France, a disappointing last of the five. Morgan the winner of the Prince of Wales Stakes. And the result, first number 10, Morgan, owned by Lord Rotherwick, trained by Dick Hearn, written by Willie Carson, and it is a photograph for second third and fourth places with hot touch probably just second ahead of muscatite third and ptolemyo fourth but no doubt about the winner there he is this game son of morston out of conciliation by st paddy here's how he won it reviewed by julian wilson well no pace at all and when there's no pace you might just as well be where willie was throughout which is bang up in the front and uh, early on it was uh, Ptolemyo who quite to contrary to his normal running style was up there with him Ptolemyo starts to weaken here joe mercer asked for an effort from uh, legend of france and didn't have a lot of room but in the end he drops right away and michael hill's challenges on the wide outside on muscadite the last to challenge and he's run a really genuine race today and then he got touched off for second but now now Willie's asked for maximum effort from Morcon, and when he does so, this magnificent horse quickens, lengthens his stride, and goes three, four lengths clear. He really is a smashing horse. He can do it from in front or behind. He can do it on firm ground, fast ground as it is today, or soft ground, which really suits him better. And he's won this competitive race by a wide margin. You can see Muscadite still just in second place at this point, but Lester Bigot uh, forces Hot Touch up on the rails to snatch second on the line with Muscadite third. So a third success in this race, which was established under its present title in 1968, the former Rice Memorial Stakes, which was founded in 1878. Third success for Dick Hearn, who won it with the famed Brigadier Gerard in 72, and won it in 1980 with Elamanamu, and now the horse we're looking at, Morgan. Unbeaten this season in his three runs all over this distance, a mile and a quarter. And beaten Adonija in the Clive Graham at Goodwood. And having made a successful reappearance in the Westbury Stakes at Sandown in April, and the first favorite of the meeting to oblige. 11.08, there's the Major, Dick Hearn. Very cheerful with Lord Rotherwick. Lord Rotherwick in the grey topper. <laughs> Willie Carson just having a word with his governor. One of his favourite horses, this grand horse always prepared to pull out more real nice looking son of a former derby winner half brother to another derby winner of course Blakeney Officially, second was Hot Touch, third was Muscatite, and fourth, Ptolemy. A four lengths and a neck. So just to recap the full official result of the Prince of Wales Stakes. First, number 10, Morgan, owned by Lord Rotherwick, trained by Dick Hearn and written by Willie Carson. Second was number four, Hot Touch, owned by Mr. Eric Moller, trained by Jeff Ragg and written by Lester Piggott. And third, number 11, Muscatite, owned by... Mr. K.L. Said, trained by Jeremy Hindley and written by Michael Hills. Four lengths and a neck.
this a race that Sunil Merlis, who's doubtless televiewing this afternoon from his new market home, virtually farmed in its early days under its present title, and he must have been expecting his son-in-law to be very strongly represented today by Legend of France, but the son of Lee Far, a sad disappointment. He was struggling from the time they entered the straight and never looked like getting on terms. The full starting price is now as follows. First, number 10, Morcon, 11 to 8 favorite. Second, number 4, Hot Touch, 8 to 1. And third, number 11, Muscatite, 14 to 1. Well, Harvard's 50 to 1. And uh, he gave uh, Bill Shoemaker quite a few anxious moments in the paddock because he became very restive, probably because of the big crowd and the heat. But once he got out onto the course, he was perfectly all right. He certainly got a lot to find to have a chance here. He was beaten into fourth place by Adonijah in the Diamond Stakes at uh, Epsom on Derby Day, beaten by 10 lengths. And he won once only last season here at Ascot over seven furlongs. But on all known form, he should be outclassed here. Keen in very easy to distinguish colours, the pale apricot colours behind the stalls. Lester Piggott's mount. Keen is comparatively lightly raced. He ran only once as a two-year-old, winning here. And he won at Kempton first time out this year. He took his chance in the 2,000 guineas, ran a good race but could finish only fifth behind El Gran Senor, and on that running, he has a lot to make up on Chief Singer, who was second. Some uh, ten lengths to make up. He was just beaten over seven furlongs at Kempton in a really memorable race against Superlative. Superlative possibly better over a sh slightly shorter trip. Chief Singer, two to one favorite from 15 to eight, seven to two bar. And Lester Piggott set a tremendous gallop on Keane to try and get to the bottom of Superlative to try and uh, make his stamina run out. But Superlative stuck to him all the way and beat him by a head on the post. And Keane has an extra furlong to go here. He was a doubtful runner about a week ago, but um, Condriac, Keen stable companion now 16 to 1 from 20 to 1. And there is Condriac, Paul Edry, who's with Henry Cecil, rides a lot of his horses, has them out on Condriac, and he won on him at Haydock, beating Welsh Idol by five lengths and beating him very easily indeed. And as you saw in the first race, the Queen Anne Stakes, Welsh Idol's a very good horse, and Condriac made him look hard. But uh, he was well beaten next time, or beaten anyway, at Newbury by Novello and Throne of Glory over six furlongs. The distance of that race probably responsible for his defeat. He started well odds on, but uh, he now goes up in distance instead of down. He's in the stall, so is Harvard, so is Keane, his stable companion. This is uh, Procida going in nearest to us. He has NASA, one of the rank outsiders, wearing blinkers, won an apprentice race last time out at Carlisle. No possible chance on that form. Chief Singer, nine to four favorite. Procida is three to one. Esperanto is nine to two, it's six to one bar. There's Kalim just going in. And I think Chief Singer will be the last. So let's join Peter O'Sullivan. Yes, Chief Singer and Esperanto, John. Esperanto goes into stall two, and that's it. They're all installed for the St. James's Palace Stakes. The white flag up, they're under orders, and they're away. Keane breaks fast from number one stall. Keane and Condriac. The two stable companions going on from Harvard and Kalim, and then comes Nasser, trying to race up to join him, but Kondriak uh, going on now. Kondriak from Nasser, Keane and Kalim, then Procida, Harvard, 
and Esperanto and Chief Singer as the back marker. They've passed the six furlong pole. NASA on the inside of Kondriak is just the leader. Keen is in third. They're going a real good clip. Kalim is four. Five comes Esperanto. Chief Singer's moved up a little bit. Procedo's got a lot to do from the rear at the moment. The back marker is Harvard. They're racing already towards the home turn, past the half-mile pole, and Kondriak in the lead. From Keane in second. Then comes Kalim going third. Behind Kalim making ground on the outside is Esperanto. As Nasa loses ground, and Chief Singer comes there strongly on the inside. Procedo still got a lot to do. Turning for home, and Kondriak is clear. Of stable companion Keane, Kalim is third. Chief Singer coming there strongly in four, chased by Esperanto. Coming down to the two furlong pole, it's Keane who's taking it up, but Ray Cochran coming there, cantering on the Coventry winner, Chief Singer, and Chief Singer has hit the front. Chief Singer, the runner-up in the Guineas, has gone to the front of the St. James's Palace now, from Keane in second and Cale in third. Chief Singer is striding away to win the St. James's Palace in tremendous style. Chief Singer is widening the gap as he strides up towards the line, and as he comes to the line, Chief Singer wins it very quickly. Comfortably indeed, Keane just hangs on to be second ahead of Kalim in a photo with Procida fourth. Five came Esperanto, six, seven, and eight were Harvard, Kondriak, the early leader, and NASA. It's a photograph for second place, but no photo needed to show that number one, Chief Singer, owned by Mr. Jeff Smith, trained by Ron Sheather, has duplicated his magnificent performance in the 1983 Coventry by winning the St. James's Palace in tremendous style under his regular partner, Ray Cochran. It's a photo for second and third, and very close indeed between Keane and Kalim, but just look at this horse by Ballad Rock out of Principia by La Fabio chief singer and recall with Julian Wilson how he won the St. James's Palace Stakes. Well before the race there was a question as to whether this horse would stay. Well they went a terrific gallop from Flagfall, Condriac made it uh, from Keane and so if there was any chink in this horse's uh, armour it would have been found out. But Ray Cochran's come there with his hands absolutely full uh, and a race that was run from Flagfall. Keane's hit the front here and gone on but only on sufferance because the moment Ray has wanted to pick him off he's done so. He's gone to the front in fact uh, well over a furlong out. Lester looks over his shoulder no that pursuit is helpless to see whether he in turn is threatened for second place and Kalim is the only danger to him for that place. Procida never got in a blow, Esperanto a desperate disappointment as well and this great big black horse almost 17 hands has won even more easily than he won the Coventry Stakes 12 months ago. It underlines what a marvellous race the 2000 guineas was and what an incredible horse El Grand Senor must be. Keen just holds on to be second from Kalim. And what a splendid training performance this by Ron Sheeva. He found after the Guineas in which uh, he really gave El Gran Senor a fright, and my goodness, what a compliment he's paid to El Gran Senor this afternoon, that the horse just wasn't firing. He was going to go for the Irish Guineas. Ray Cochran reported to him, sadly, he just didn't give him the right feel in his final gallop before he was due to go to the Curra. So uh, Ron... Uh, forgot about him, he found that his blood count was wrong, left him alone for a while, brought him back gradually, steadily for this, his first race since the 2000 games. He's the 85 to 40 favorite ultimately this afternoon, having been on the slide all the while, because I think it probably became known that, that Ron would have liked another few days with him to ensure him being back to peak. Jeff Smith, his uh, sporting owner there, gave uh, only 10,000 guineas for him, bought by contemporary standards right in the bargain basement, and very large sums uh, have been refused for him since then. And what a splendid reward to his owner for hanging on to him and resisting six-figure temptation. Extraordinary thing about this horse is that he's hardly changed in confirmation since he was a two-year-old. He was a big strapping lad when he won, came storming up here to bring off a 21 shock in his first appearance in a race course in the Coventry. And he's just stayed about the same horse.
in stature, stature wise, and he certainly hasn't lost shed any of his ability. Very bright, intelligent horse, certainly the best uh, product of his sprinting sire to race yet, Ballad Rock. And just getting sufficient stamina from his grandsire, Le Fabuleux. Officially, second was Keen, and third was Kalin. And the distance is eight lengths and ahead. We very seldom see a St. James's Palace winner succeed by this extravagant margin. Oh, let me just recap the one, two, three first. Number one, Chief Singer, owned by Mr. Jeff Smith, trained by Ron Sheather and written by Ray Cochran. Second was number six, Keen, owned by Lord Howard de Walden, trained by Henry Cecil, written by Lester Piggott. And third was number five, Kalim, owned by His Highness the Aga Khan, trained by Fulk Johnson Horton, and written by Steve Cawthon. Fourth was number eight, Proceda. Eight lengths and a head, and the winner, 85 to 40. Having run a tremendous race as a long odds chance in the 2000 guineas when it he ranged upside El Gran Senor with Ray Cochran with a double handful but the splendid Derby second just found another gear and uh, went away from it so a tremendous tribute to him though his stable companion Esperanto, El Gran Senor stable companion, that is Esperanto, was clearly disappointing this afternoon. The runner up, incidentally, 13 to 2, and the third, Kalim, a 14 to 1 chance. So, as we await uh, confirmation, of the SP, the full SP, as I say, is 85 to 40, 13 to 2, and 14 to 1. Here are the results to date this afternoon. And first of all, the 2.30 at Royal Ascot. First number 7, Trojan Fen, 9 to 4. Second number 6, Welsh Idol, 40 to 1. And third number 2, Cormorant Wood, 7 to 4 favourite. The tote dividends, £2.60 for a win. The place is £1.40, £2.70. And the straight forecast, £41.52, and the dual forecast, £15.40, pence, six rand. 3-5, first number 10, Morkin, 11 to 8 favourite. Second number 4, Hot Touch, 8 to 1. And third number 11, Muscatite, 14 to 1. The wind tote, £2.10, places £1.40 and £1.40 again. Straight forecast, £10.11, and the dual forecast, £5.20, and there were five runners. First, 2.45, first number 18, Dom Tony, 9 to 1. Second number 3, Farlington, 14 to 1. And third number 5, Malowski, 20 to 1. A 2.15, one by number 6, Playtex, 14 to 1. Second number 17, Incestuous, 9 to 4 favourite. And third number 1, Lucky Dutch, 8 to 1. And now we have the uh, SPs for that last race just seen the St. James Palace stakes first number one chief singer 85 to 40 favorite second number six keen 13 to 2 and third number five Kalim 14 to 1 jackpot number 301 well, prima domini is 13 to 8 on great reef and native skier 6 to 1 a star video 8 to 1 run with the wind is 12s golf hour that opened at 10s has gone right out to 20 to 1 have a tire 25s and soccer is 50 to 1. Running in a drop nose band, as you can see, and this is usually put on, it's a little bit like a citation actually, and this is put on really hard pullers as usual. And Brian Swift was telling me he's a really keen horse, this one. And Brian should know because he was, uh, in his riding days, was associated with that flying machine, Skindles Hotel. 
there you can see the sheepskin noseband that runs around underneath which is uh, to stop the uh, chitin bit you might call it chafing him and he's going into his stall number three nice quietly but a cold watch for his speed i think we'll see john reed trying to settle him early and produce him with a run through the final third great reef going into stall seven pretty well drawn I don't think with only eight runners that the draw should affect. Number five, native skier, the Mount of Leicester Pickett. Here we go into stall four. Good looking son of Bolkonski. He'll be about one of the last ones, so let's join Peter. Yes, that's native skier in the star video. A to go and Abutea. That's Abutea on the far side. This is star video on the right. Abutea due into two stalls. Star video. Into number one, nearest to us. Primo Domini, 13 to 8 on, 6, Great Reef and Native Skier, 8 to 1, bar the 3. This is Star Video and Steve Cawthon going in. They're the last installed. And that's it. Under orders, and they're away. Abutea breaks uh, very fast and is the early leader from Star Video on the near side, then Native Skier. Primo Domini is fourth at this stage of the race, and it's Star Video to the right, Abutea in the centre, Native Skier to the far side. Behind these three come Primo Domini, Run With The Wind is over on the far side, and then Saka, then Gulfar, and Great Reef is the back marker at the moment as they race down towards the halfway mark. Star Video and Abutea disputing it. They had a little collision there. Native Skier on the far side, Side. Primo Domini is tracking the two leaders. Run with the in wind comes next, and then Saka and Great Reef and Gulfar is the back marker. And they're coming down to the two furlong pole. And it's Star Video, the leader, being chased by Primo Domini. Native skier under pressure over on the far side. Star Video from Primo Domini. Steve Cawthon from John Reed. John Reed coming to challenge on the stand side now on Primo Domini as they come down to the furlong pole. It's Star Video from Primo Domini. Native skiers in third, then run with the wind, and Great Reef producing a great run towards the stand side under the stand's rail. But it's Primo Domini who's taken it up as they race into the closing stages. It's Primo Domini from Star Video and up the line. Primo Domini wins it from Star Video. It's a photo for third between Native Skier and Run with the Wind. Great Reef came next after that great run up the fence and a long way back came Saka and Abutea, the early leader, and then Gulfar. And so the result of the Coventry Stakes is first, number eight. Primo Domini, owned by Mr. Peter Wetzel, trained by Brown Swift and ridden by John Reed. Second was number 12, Star Video, owned by Mr. W.G. Best, trained by Matt McCormick and ridden by Steve Cawthon. And it's a photo for third place. And very close indeed for third between number five, Native Skier, and number nine, Run With The Wind. And in fact, the judge has added to that photo finish number three, Great Reef. But this is the winner, Primo Domini, unbeaten, getting an immediate 20 to 1 quote from Corals for the 1985 2000 Guineas. This coat by Dominion out of Swan Ann by My Swanee, the apple of Brown Swift's eye. Brown determined to have him. He's had the family before, and uh, he went really a little bit beyond his intended bid when he secured him on behalf of his owner for 146,000 guineas. He became the 24th winner of the season for John Reed. Number 12 for his trainer, Brown. Here is this winner. Here's how he won it, reviewed by Julian Wilson. Well, he won all right in the end, but there were some anxious moments, and I think the problem is that the horse has just been tending to hang in behind Star Video, possibly the ground a little bit on the far side for him, and he wasn't that impressive the last time he won here. Star Video in front there. Notice that right on the right, uh, 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 Great Reefs are starting his run, and uh, Ray Cochran's brought him right over to the stand rails. But it's now that it's now or never for John Reed, and he has to get a little bit serious with his horse and ask him to go. He's ridden him with a bit of confidence. He's known what he can pr produce after what he did at Sandown last time. But he did certainly wait 
quite late until he asked for that effort. And when he's made the effort, it still seems to me that the horse is tending to hang to the right. There wasn't any appreciable interference, and certainly the best horse won. Back in the line behind, it looks as though Lester's just driven native skier into third place. But the winners won well, but nothing like as impressively at Sandown. This is Star Video coming in ahead of Primo Domini. Lester returning on native skier. This quite the most heavily backed uh, horse of the day, I would say. Started ultimately at seven to four on. A pat there from uh, a very relieved Brian Swift for this son of Dominion. Still awaiting the outcome of the photo of a third, but let me just tell you that uh, the sponsors of the Coral Eclipse following the success of Morgan today now make a time chart of the two to one favorite for the Eclipse, Morgan five to two, Saddler's Wells three to one, and they go six to one, the Budweiser, Budweiser million winner, uh, Ptolemyo. Here comes the outcome of the photo for third. Third was number five, Native Skier. And fourth was number nine, Run With The Wind. So just to recapitulate the result of the 1984 Group 3 Coventry Stakes, first, number eight, Primo Domini, owned by Mr. Peter Wetzel, trained by Brian Swift and written by John Reed. Second was number 12, Star Video, owned by Mr. W.G. Best, trained by Matt McCormick and written by Steve Cawthon. And third was number five, Native Skier, owned by Mr. Tony Richards, trained by Clive Britton and written by Lester Pickett. Fourth was number nine, Run With The Wind.